My favorite ideas don't just help with business, they're good for the community as well. So I approached a bar with an innovative way to stop drunks from getting behind the wheel. The concept was to have a street magician stationed outside the bar, performing a magic trick that allows him to secretly test the blood alcohol levels of patrons as they leave. And with my background in magic, I offered to test it out. This is Nathan for you. For my final trick, I'm going to need your keys. My keys? Yes. Great. Give the wand a blow. Okay, a little bit harder, right into the top. Okay, and you're over the legal limit okay. blood alcohol, so your keys are gone and I cannot oh. give them back to you. Okay. Sorry. But that's when I realized the flaw in my idea. If I held on to his keys and he took a cab, the guy couldn't get into his apartment. Could I get my keys, please? I can't because you're drunk. Please give me my keys. And the only solution at that point was to drive him home. You live far. I know I do. Also, once I got him home, I realized I couldn't just give him his keys until he was asleep or else he might go out and drive again. You need to see me sleeping? I need to see you fall asleep before I leave your keys or else you might take them and go out again. <sighs> you don't brush your teeth before bed? Usually not, I usually brush my teeth in the morning. Really? Yep. I know it's kind of gross, but nobody else is really paying attention to the way my breath smells. So I had to put him to bed and make sure he went to sleep and if that looking glass gets broke, mama's gonna get you a billy goat. Before I left his keys. Emily Yep has been operating her antique shop, Magnolia and Willow, in the Long Beach area for over five years. But lately, she's been finding it tough to get customers in the door. It does get hard when it's really slow. I mean, it's... It always feels like it's the end of the world. But after surveying the neighborhood, I realized that Emily might not be taking full advantage of her surroundings. So I paid her a visit with a way to help. I noticed there are a lot of bars and nightclubs in the area. Yeah. Is that something you like? Um, it's a little hard. Sometimes we have some problems with over-serving and that kind of thing. But most of the time we're closed by six, so it doesn't affect us as much. But maybe it should. You see, Magnolia and Willow has a strict you-break-it-you-buy-it policy, meaning that if an item breaks, it's as good as a sale. So if instead of closing at 6 p.m., Emily extended her hours to be open straight through the night, her chances of inebriated customers generating new sales would greatly increase. The plan? Attract late-night drunks by staying open 24 hours a day. Well, possibly, I guess, yeah. I mean, I would... I guess so, yeah. I mean, the way I see it, mm -hmm. if you get the right drunk in here, yeah. you could make more in a single night than you do all month. I just wouldn't prefer a broken item. I'd rather sell a good one, but yeah. I mean, it would be the same thing no matter what happened, so. I mean, a lot of this stuff is probably the only way you're gonna get anything for it is if someone breaks it. Well, some of the items, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Emily agreed to try out my idea to see if it got the results I had promised. So the next day, I returned to the store and officially changed the hours. Then, to help our cause, I had the aisles narrowed slightly and moved some of her poorer selling items to an area of the store that would increase the likelihood of accidental contact. So that evening, once the sun went down, it was time to see if the new extended hours would work. But knowing that tonight's sales would determine if Emily kept using my idea, I wanted to guarantee we had some results. So I headed to a nearby bar with a plan to befriend a drunk patron and lead them back to the store. Do you know the antique shop next door? Oh yeah, yeah. They're open 24 hours now. 24 hours? Yeah. Okay. That's weird. After a few unsuccessful attempts to connect with the locals, I finally found someone who was willing to chat. What's your favorite movie? Inception. Inception? Yeah. Really? Have you seen that? Why? Why is it your favorite movie? I'm What's jazzed. yours? Forrest Gump. He told me his name was JJ, and he seemed like my best shot at getting a big sale for Emily. But for this to work, I needed to get him drunk while staying sober enough myself to execute the plan. So prior to my arrival, I had a vacuum-powered device sewn into the lining of my jacket that was designed to discreetly suck up the alcohol I was served through a tube into a pouch on my back. Then, a second motor would deliver apple juice from a different pouch, quickly refilling the glass and allowing me to go shot for shot with JJ without losing my focus one bit. Cheers. 
Over the course of the next hour, we had several rounds, and I noticed that JJ was getting pretty tipsy. My roommates put this piece of paper in my pocket. They're like, just in case you get too drunk, you can get lost tonight. That's your address? Yeah. They put a piece of paper with your address in your pocket? So you, you go, you get drunk often. Oh yeah. You're really drunk. Every night. And I felt that we were finally ready to head out. I explained to him that the cameras were there for a documentary about nightlife in Long Beach. But in reality, my only goal was to get him inside the antique shop. There was just one more step I had to take to get him ready. There's this uh, costume party in the area. That... A costume party? Yeah. Let's go. You want to go? Yeah. Safety is always my number one priority. So I came up with the idea of a costume party as a way to get JJ into a padded outfit that would protect him against any antiques he might shatter once he stumbled into Emily's store. Cool. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. And with that, we headed out to my made up party. I just hoped I could convince him to make a stop along the way. Oh, sweet, look. Open 24 hours. What is it? It's like some sort of store, but look. Free, Free pizza. pizza. Do you see it? It's right back there. It's right there at the back, like a heat lamp. Let's go. Are All you right. coming with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you okay, man? I'm all right right now. All right. You better be careful. It's all right. Watch your back. There's no way. I can't even fit through that. It's too tight. Well, what do you, I mean, do you want the pizza or, or what? I got a wedge here. You broke the stuff. Right, I see that. That's why I'm like, eh, I don't really want to break it anymore because it's fucking super expensive. You have it, you break it, you buy it, Paul. Yeah. The plan was a success. JJ had destroyed a large selection of antiques. And once he freed himself from the aisle, all Emily had to do was catalog the broken items. You're pretty clumsy, huh? Is there any way I can take this thing off? And ring up the sale. It's about $280 worth of damage. And that's probably getting off easy because I couldn't really assess right. all of it broken. <laughs> so with that, Emily got to make a sizable sale. A oh, lesson learned, huh? Sorry. Right. And JJ even got to take home some antiques. Maybe you look at it this way, it looks like it's brand new. Right. So it's kind of a blessing in disguise. Right, right, right. I was so happy everything worked out, and Emily seemed really won over by the idea. But as we left the store, I noticed that JJ was still pretty drunk. And since he made such a big purchase, I felt the least I could do was be a gentleman and give him a ride home. Do you often do stuff like that without really thinking it through? Um, yeah. As we drove to JJ's apartment, I thought my night was over. But that's when he started talking to me about his sex life. Tag team a girl, yeah. Tag team a girl? Yeah. Yeah, what's that? It's when you have a threesome with two guys and one girl. And you do that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I do it with my brother a lot, actually. Oh, really? Me and my brother are dogs. JJ began going into detail about the threesomes he has with his brother. And at that point, I really just wanted to get home. But when I dropped him off, he insisted that I meet the guy. So I waited outside as JJ went in and brought out his brother. You guys have sex with the same girl. Yeah. <laughs> I, told him about, <laughs> I told him about tag team. Yeah. I told him. So you guys are brothers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And wow. you... And you guys, you'll have sex with the same girl? <laughs> Shit, I'll be fucking a girl when he's fucking a girl right next to me. Two. Even like. And then you're looking at each other during uh -huh. it? No. It's dark in the room. Lights are off all the way and you don't see shit. It's fine. But if you're not looking at each other and you're having sex with a girl, why not just one of you do it and then the next one does it later? Because it's something we do. Right, it's, it's just fucking... something we've done. Oh, I mean, all my all my homeboys from back in Ohio, they do it all. Everybody does this. Max, fucking Jetty jo squad. George. Shout Je out to Jetty Squad. Shout yeah. out to that J Squad. <laughs> I mean, the one I do look at you guys, and a part of me is envious that, you know, I don't have someone in my life that is I'm this close with. And it's nice to see brotherly love taken to that level in a way. Yeah, I definitely see where it come from. It's just and like you to know, us, it's just like. It's nothing. 
it's like, it's just like, that's what fucking we're used to. We're used to all this shit. It's great meeting you. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. See you guys. Yep. yep. With a successful night under our belt, I could finally return to Magnolia and Willow to get Emily's thoughts on how it went. I mean, it's a pretty big sale. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 definitely. It, so how did you helps, feel about yeah. that? That's it's good, yeah. And you know, anytime great, we're right? moving any product, it's always beneficial to the store. So and that was a lot of product. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was good. It's definitely. just kind of awkward having people that might be having a little too much to drink. It's a little harder to control in your store, that kind of thing. Well, sales a sale. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thank you for all your help and your suggestions. It was all really great. Mm. Good experience to try it. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah, you no, you too. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Life isn't easy for smokers these days, as smoking bans throughout America have made the outdoors the only option for lighting up. But hit worst of all has been the bars, and proprietors like Ellen Sanser of the 1881 Club in Pasadena, California, claim that smoking restrictions have caused her profits to plummet. We lost a lot of our customers. Our business went down by half. As a smoker herself, she's not happy so I paid Ellen a visit with a way she might be able to return to those profitable glory days. In my opinion, smokers shouldn't be treated like second-class citizens. Absolutely. If anything, they should be treated better than the rest of us because they're gonna die so young. Or at least as well as the rest of them. Right, so you think people should be allowed to smoke in here? Yeah. Well, I might have a way to make that happen. Okay. Right now, California state law prohibits smoking in a business unless it happens to be part of a theatrical production where smoking is integral to the plot. So if Ellen added a small audience section to her bar and then classified every patron as an actor in a free-form play, the 1881 Club would become the only drinking hole in town where people could legally smoke. That could be possible. I never thought about it turning it around that way. Well, most theater is terrible. <laughs> and I've seen a few bad ones, yeah. yeah. So who's to say a bar filled with smokers can't be a boundary-pushing theatrical experience? Right. In the eyes of the law. It's an idea. It's definitely an idea. Ellen was thrilled at the prospect of bringing smokers back to her bar. So the next day, I had my team bring in a couple of theater seats to create a small audience section, and then throw up a curtain to complete the theater experience. I also chose a title for the play, Smokers Allowed, that would conveniently double to attract clientele. Then put up a sign on the door informing patrons that by entering the bar, they're legally agreeing to be actors in a theatrical production. So when nighttime came, I headed to some other bars in the area to get word spreading about LA's hottest new smoking destination. You gotta smoke outside here, huh? Yeah. Have you been to uh, 1881 Club? 1881 Club. They allow you to smoke there. So how do they allow that? Like, like what's, is it a loophole or? Yeah, loophole. What's the loophole? Theater law. Oh, really? Yeah. My promotional efforts seem to be working. All right, smokers unite. Because within minutes, customers began arriving at the 1881 Club for a night of legal indoor smoking. As a final precaution, I had two women recruited from the theater district who were interested in seeing an exciting new play. So for two? For two. Okay, you're in luck. We have two uh, front row seats still available. Very cool. I knew an audience would be the final piece to legitimize my production in the eyes of the law. So with the women in their seats, it was time to begin the show. All right, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. So it took a lot of work to get this play off the ground. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything. But all I'll say is I hope you enjoy this as much as we enjoyed making it. So without further ado, smokers allowed. <laughs> That's all I'm married.
My plan was working great. People could now smoke freely without the bar having to worry about any legal repercussions. And with the audience shoved away in the corner, hardly any customers seemed to notice they were there. Best of all, I had never seen Ellen look happier. So after an hour and 20 minutes, when the bar crowd started to dwindle, I decided to close the curtain and say the play was over. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed Smokers Aloud. It was a successful evening, but then something happened that I never expected. The audience actually seemed to enjoy the play. Oh man, they were awesome. Yeah, yeah, they, they were. were awesome. It's so funny because it's like so nothing in a way, but incredibly profound. It reminded me of Sam Shepard. I didn't really know what to make of this. After all, these ladies could be total kooks. But if what happened in there somehow had genuine theatrical value, it could be a whole new source of revenue for the 1881 Club. I had no idea if we'd get an audience, but as showtime neared, it looked like we might have a sellout on our hands, as a line comprised mostly of family and friends of the actors began filling up the seats. Meanwhile, backstage was a buzz with my cast running lines and getting some final touch-ups. But before we could begin, I still had the tough task that I'd been putting off of breaking the news to Ellen that she didn't get the part. So, opening night. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, I am. Looking forward to it. Before we begin, I just want to say your audition was great. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't quite what I was looking for for the role of female bar owner. Right, no problem, I understand. Okay, so that being said, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Amy. Um, she's the actress that will be playing you. All right. And I think you'll find she really honors the character. Amy, do you want to show her a bit of your Ellen? Nice to see you, can I get you a drink? Yeah, that sounds good. All right, so you guys want to switch out? Even though Ellen wouldn't be in the play, I still wanted her to enjoy the show, which is why I had a front row seat in the audience reserved especially for her. With just a few minutes until showtime, I had a final look over to ensure that every prop and every actor was in the exact right position. And once the scene was set, we were ready to begin. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming. We're very excited. I'm always hesitant to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything, but I'll just say I, I hope you enjoy this play as much as we enjoyed making it. Um, so, without further ado, Smokers Aloud. It was such an amazing feeling to see my play finally launch, and 20 minutes in, it was clear our rehearsals had paid off, as my actors were able to stay faithful to the original night, matching the dialogue and actions as closely as possible. But instead, I stay home and I watch The Real Housewives of New York City. Have you ever seen that? And I could sense that the audience was really connecting with their performance. My romantic leads had finally found a chemistry that felt as genuine as the love that real-life couple they were playing shared. But all this would mean nothing if the play's climax didn't land. The guy showing off his skateboard deck while a three-person selfie happened at the same time. The audience was on the edge of their seats, craving something to put this over the top. And I'm happy to say, we delivered. It was a strong first showing for the entire cast, and I was hopeful this would be a real moneymaker for the 1881 Club. So once the play was done and the cast took their bows, I felt compelled to express my gratitude for everyone's support. Ah, thank you so much for coming out on behalf of, of the cast and myself. Uh, we're so amazed at this turnout. Um, now, even though uh, a lot of the characters you saw in the play tonight were smoking, 
It's important to remember that smoking does kill over 400,000 Americans per year. Another 8.6 million live with a serious illness that was caused by smoking or secondhand smoke. So think before you light up. Thank you so much for coming out and good night. My play was a bona fide success, and I was so proud of my cast for giving such a memorable performance the audience would never forget. I would probably not recommend it to anybody as far as saying it's a really good show. I, I can't understand this play anymore. The response was overwhelming, but the only opinion that really mattered was Ellen's. So once the bar cleared out, I nervously checked in with her to get her thoughts. So, um, what did you think of the play? It was okay, it was a little boring as far as I was concerned, but... So you didn't like it? Not particularly. It wasn't, it just wasn't, they were just sitting there. Nobody was really doing anything. So does that mean you're not gonna keep doing it here? I doubt it, seriously doubt it. Our customers come in here to watch sports, watch TV, not just to sit and watch somebody sit there smoking. All right, well. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your trying. <laughs>